are you trying to send numerical values over the serial port using parse int with Arduino? Like you're trying to send integers or something like that. Maybe you're struggling to understand the difference between serial read and serial parse int and how they can work for you. Do you just need to convert multiple digit characters to one integer? Well, in this lesson, you will learn exactly how to use parse int from the Arduino serial library to convert characters into an integer. Get ready. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Are you learning Arduino programming? Check out our membership program to learn the software and hardware skills you'll need to build your own projects. You'll get an all access pass to our high quality video training that covers everything from the basics of programming like variables and control structures up to using interrupts, arrays, and more. Follow the link in the description to sign up today. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna cover. First, we'll do a quick overview of serial communication. We'll compare serial read with serial parse int. We'll play around with some code for converting characters to integers with parse int. And then we're gonna talk about the several parse int details, like set timeout, look ahead mode, and ignore. If you already watched our lesson on using serial read, then you already know one method of taking serial input and converting the characters into an integer by putting all the incoming bytes into a character array. If you wanna learn that method, make sure to check out the lesson on serial read. Now, that code worked great, but it was somewhat lengthy. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about a different way to do it, and we'll be using the function from the serial library called parse int. So let's do a quick review of how serial communication works with Arduino. Your Arduino has some hardware on it that will allow you to receive data serially over USB. It will store that data in a buffer called the serial receive buffer. Now, if the word buffer throws you off, don't sweat it. You can think of a buffer like a bunch of horse stalls in a stable. Some stables are big and have a bunch of stalls. You can put a bunch of horses in there. Other stables are quite small and you only have room for you know so many horses. You can't take in more horses than you have stalls. A buffer is like a stable, but instead of having horse stalls, it has spaces in memory where the data can be stored. Generally speaking, a buffer is a transient place for data storage in a program. Usually, you're gonna be receiving data into a buffer and then reading it out pretty quickly because more data is gonna be coming in and you need to make space for it. This isn't some hard and fast rule though. The serial receive buffer has room for 64 bytes. So when data comes to your Arduino over serial, each byte will end up in this serial receive buffer. It's your job as the programmer to read the data out of the serial receive buffer and actually do something with it. Say your Arduino is attached to your Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi has a program sending serial data to your Arduino you've got to do something with that serial data that's ending up in the serial receive buffer. But how do you do that? Well, it turns out there's quite a few ways. If you want to take out each byte at a time, then you can use the serial read function. When you use serial read, it takes out the first byte in the serial buffer, and that's what it returns. The rest of the bytes then shift over. If your serial receive buffer was filled with the characters C biscuit, and you call serial read once, then the capital S would be read out and E biscuit would be left. Every character having shifted over so that now the lowercase E is the next in line. Serial read is great if you wanna read in each character at a time, and then maybe do some things based on different characters that come in. But what if you wanna get a whole number like 1776? If you use serial read, you'd get a one, and then you'd get a seven, and then you'd get another seven, and finally you'd get a six. Plus, they'd all be stored as characters, not as integers. And you don't want one digit integers all the time. You might want the whole number, 1776, saved as an integer. Now, as I mentioned before, we talked about how to accomplish this in the last lesson 
using a character array and the A to I function. But there's a somewhat simpler method if all you want to do is convert the character input into an integer. That's where the parse int or parse integer function from the serial library comes in. What the parse int function will do is scan down the serial receive buffer one byte at a time in search of the first valid numerical digit. So if you have the characters 3, 1, 4 in the serial receive buffer, you'd get 314 returned the first time you call serial.parseInt. If you had I ate 314 tacos in the serial receive buffer, you'd only get 314 returned the first time you call serial parse int. So parse int is looking at the first item in the serial receive buffer and it's checking, hey, is this character a numerical character like 0 through 9 or a negative sign? If it is, I'm going to go ahead and start reading in until I get to a non numerical character. This scanning that parse int does allows you to grab an entire integer out of the serial receive buffer. What does serial parse integer do with non-numeric values in the serial receive buffer? If the non-numeric values are only before a valid numerical digit, what it does is it tosses them out, it grabs those numerical digits, then it leaves the rest in the serial receive buffer. So if in our serial receive buffer, we had I ate 314 tacos, when we call serial parse int the first time, it's going to skip over I8. It's going to grab the 314 and combine them into one integer. And then it's going to leave the space tacos in the serial receive buffer. It's not going to touch that. What does parse integer do if there's only non numeric values in the serial receive buffer? If all parse integer can see in the serial receive buffer are non numeric values, it's going to return a zero, and it's going to leave all those values sitting in the Siri receive buffer. It's probably like, hey, why are you calling me? There's no numbers in the Siri receive buffer. That's what I'm for, getting integers, not this stuff. Now, if you start getting a bunch of zeros returned from parse int, and you're not sure why, remember that new lines and carriage returns may be added when using the serial monitor window in the Arduino IDE even though you're not actually going to see them in the send section where you enter the text. If you don't want these terminating characters, make sure to select no line ending from the dropdown. Now a common method of using parse integer is to pair it with a while loop and serial available so that the only time you check for a new integer is when data has actually arrived at the serial port. Now, if this code structure looks odd to you, then check out the lesson that we did on serial read because it explains it in depth. So this code construct here is how you can convert data coming in over serial in the form of characters into a whole integer. But there's a couple really important things you need to know about the parse integer function. As they say, the devil is in the details and parse int has a couple of really neat details. The first of these interesting details is that parse integer actually returns a long data type. It's not an integer data type. So if you've got a big number coming in, you can save it into a long data type variable. Second is the fact that parse integer will time out after a given programmable set point. The default set point is one second or a thousand milliseconds. Let's say, for example, it takes a while for your data to arrive at the serial port. Like maybe every 300 milliseconds you get a new character. Maybe you get the three digit, 300 milliseconds later you get the one digit, 300 milliseconds later you get the four digit, 300 milliseconds later you get the five. So the total time to receive the value 3145 is 900 milliseconds. Instead of just reading out each of those values as it arrives, parse integer is going to wait that set amount of time before it returns the integer that it's found. To adjust the timeout period, you use the function serial.setTimeout, and you pass in the amount of time that you want parse integer to wait. So in the example above, parse integer would read out the 3 as soon as it came. 
it's still in that timeout period. And then when the one came up, it would read the one out and add that to the end of the three. So now we'd have 31. It'd still be waiting. The timeout period's still going. It grabbed that four when it came in, added to the end. So we'd have three, one, four. And then finally the five came in just to the nick of time. And then it'd put the five at the end and it would return the integer three, one, four, five or 3,145 as one integer. But what if the delay was even longer for incoming characters, say 400 milliseconds? So we'd be able to get the 314, but then that last digit 5 would still be sitting in the serial receive buffer because it didn't make it in in time. So the first time parse integer is called, we get 314. The next time we call parse integer, then we get the 5. Again, the devil's in the details. This set timeout function is something you'll definitely want to explore. It's kind of interesting to play around with that timeout period and see what results you get. Another interesting detail of the parse integer function is that you can call it with optional parameters. The first optional parameter is called lookahead mode. And there are three predetermined lookahead mode values that you can send. Skip, skip all, and skip whitespace. Skip all is the default mode which is used when you call serial parse int and you don't pass anything. So you could use it explicitly, like serial.parseInt skip all. That would be the same thing as just calling serial.parseInt. So it's the default mode. With the skip all mode, all characters other than numerical digits and a minus sign are ignored as parse integer scans down the serial receive buffer in look of its first numerical digit. This is the behavior that we've already explored. If you use the skip none mode. What this does is tell parse integer as it scans down the serial buffer not to skip any of the items. So basically what it's saying is, hey, when you look at that first value, if it is not a numerical digit or a negative sign, then we're not going to mess with anything in the serial receive buffer and it would return a zero. So let's say your serial buffer, you had U8314 tacos. If you call parse int it's going to return a zero. It's going to say, hey, you told me to skip none. The letter capital Y is not a numerical digit, so I'm not even going to mess with this. Finally, with look ahead mode set to skip white space, then only tabs, spaces, line feeds, and carriage returns are skipped. Now, tabs, spaces, line feeds, carriage returns, they are all represented in ASCII. So they all have ASCII values, and those ASCII values are what is going to be skipped when we use skip whitespace. So let's say your serial receive buffer, you had a bunch of spaces. So again, there's an ASCII code for a space. So you have a bunch of spaces, then you have the numerical numbers, three, one, four, another space, and then tacos exclamation. If you call parse int with skip whitespaces look ahead mode, it's gonna skip all that whitespace and then grab the three, one, four for you. This look ahead feature is pretty cool especially if the data you're receiving has a bunch of mixed things, like maybe you're sending character commands like turn on and turn off, but you're also sending numerical values like 314 or whatever. These options give you one way to differentiate between that incoming serial data. But is there a way to ignore specific characters coming into the serial port and just grab the numerical values? Well, in fact, there is because parse integer has another optional parameter that you can pass. So first we have the look ahead mode that we can pass. And after that, we can send a character that we want to ignore. For example, maybe you've got commas on the incoming data stream or any character for that matter. You can pass that character as the ignore value. So if in the serial buffer, you had 3,142 and you had a comma in there, parse int, would ignore the comma and grab out the 3142 for you. That's pretty cool. This can come in handy if there are characters you don't want to act as delimiters in your number. Also, when you're putting in the value, make sure to use single quotes around your ignore value so that parse integer knows that it's a single character. All right, we covered a ton. Let's do a recap here. So we talked about how serial data, when it arrives at the serial port, it goes to the serial receive buffer. We said that, hey, serial read is great, but it only reads in one byte at a time. We talked about how parse integer 
can be used to convert characters in the serial receive buffer into integers. We talked about three look ahead modes, skip all, skip none, and skip white space. We know that the default look ahead mode is skip all. We also talked about how you can ignore a specific character in the serial receive buffer with parse integer. Thanks a ton for watching and I hope you learned something useful. Make sure to check back soon for other great lessons. Hey, take it easy and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.